so far we have seen who mahavira was right he was the founder of jainism well he also had several different teachings that really attracted a lot of people now let's go and learn these teachings once upon a time there was a monk and he was very very thankful for the food that he had on a banyan leaf he had rotis and potatoes but a boy comes up and he is very hungry and he sees what is happening there and he thinks if the sage doesn't have his food fast then i'm going to steal it what happens next is that the boy steals the rotis and starts eating it but the sage sees this and then they both start running now finally after a run the boy is caught by the sage or the monk and he thinks that now the monk is going to hit him because he stole his food but the monk offers him the potatoes and says the food will taste better so the boy is shocked and then he eats his meal happily so what do we understand from that story well we get to learn about the most important teaching in jainism which is the concept of non violence or ahimsa what is this it's the most important teaching of jainism right and in fact mahavira was the first one to bring this concept or explain this idea of non violence right and he is also known as the prince of peace because it is said that he has never hurt another soul in fact the father of our nation mahatma gandhi was inspired by the teachings of mahavira and he said that this entire concept of ahimsa or non violence has been very clearly portrayed in jainism for the first time ever so now the head of a jain family has to take certain vows what are these there are five such vows that he has to take so let's learn what these are one by one the first vow is ahimsa or non violence that we just saw so we understand from all of this that ahimsa or non violence that is that we can't hurt another person is the core concept or core idea of jainism next we have satya or truth so this basically means that we must not lie and we always should speak the truth the third vow is asteya or non stealing according to this we should never take something that does not belong to us in fact we should only take things that belong to us so we should not steal from other people and not take what isn't ours next we have aparigraha what is this this is non possession so we should give up material desires material desires and detach ourselves from people things basically we should detach ourselves from everything people things even places why is it so because so in order for us not to suffer we should always give up all of our worldly desires and our material attachments the fifth vow is brahmacharya or chastity in this we should lead a virtuous and moral life so these are the five important vows that are really important in jainism now other than that mahavira had divided his followers into four orders or community so now what is an order well a religious order is different right so a religious order tells us about the way a religion is organized now let's take a look at the four orders first we have the monk or the sadhu right and their female version is basically nun or sadhvi so the men are monk and the uh, women are nun right so they renounce the worldly desires and attachments and take the five vows that we just learnt about so they take their religion very very seriously apart from that others are also there in the order they are the layman or the shravak and the lay woman or the shravika so who are these people and how are they different from the monk and the nun right so they are the common people who follow jainism and listen to the jain gurus and take some vows not all the five but some vows including non violence and chastity and together this order is known as the jain sangha now take a look at these pictures here this is from the jain sangha so in this picture here we can see some nuns who have renounced their worldly possessions and have dedicated their lives to their religion in all of these pictures you can clearly see how devoted they look you can even see these people wearing masks so why are these people wearing masks they are wearing masks because 
they do not want to even hurt the smallest bacteria or the smallest microbes that might enter their mouth so they are that devoted and you can see how plain and simple they look and the plain simple clothes that they are wearing another one of mahavira's important teachings includes nirvana or moksha this concept is very important so what exactly is this in jainism the supreme goal the final and the ultimate goal is to achieve nirvana what does nirvana mean well it means freedom from the world mahavira had achieved nirvana after 12 years of continuous meditation right so he had freed himself from the cycle of rebirths so he had achieved nirvana mahavira preached that we can achieve nirvana if we just follow the rules of the three ratna so what exactly is this these are the three jewels this is right action right faith and right knowledge in mahavira's teachings is that mahavira rejected the caste system so what is this caste system well all of this was happening during the vedic age and in the later vedic age there was this system called the caste system and in this there was a hierarchy of people right so the brahmins were more important than the shudras the vaishyas right so there were people who are more important exploiting the people who are considered less important according to this caste system so now what happened is that when mahavira came he completely rejected this caste system and said that everyone was equal everyone was equal irrespective of their function or their job in the society so this really attracted the people belonging to the lower castes in hinduism as they saw this as an opportunity to uplift themselves so they also left hinduism for following jainism now another important topic or concept is the concept of karma so now what is this karma well it is believed that all living forms have a soul which is eternal and it never dies right and so our actions in the present life and what we do in our current life defines our next life so if we are good in this life then our next life will also be good however if we are naughty and if we are bad in this life in our next life we will also suffer so now take a look at this picture here this guy has just pushed a huge block right and so ultimately all the blocks get pushed and this huge block is going to crush him right so he is going to suffer because of his consequences take a look at that picture in this picture you can very clearly see that this guy is trying to keep his house clean by throwing all of the garbage in someone else's house funnily enough someone else is also throwing garbage in his house so the concept of karma can be clearly understood by it because we can understand that you get what you do and it is because of this thing that mahavira also taught that we should always do good karma so let's try to understand the concept of karma by looking at this video it says that our actions only affect our consequences for example this man is suffering in a tornado because he used to steal money from other people whereas this girl is always happy because she is always helping other people out and karma is good to her whereas this man has spent all of his life helping poor people so by the order of karma he always stays happy and he has everything to keep him happy so now we come to how mahavira rejected the whole idea of god according to jainism the universe and its constituents such as the concept of time sun moon all the planets they all have always existed and an immaterialistic thing like god cannot create something materialistic like us humans right so mahavira said that an external force like god cannot decide our own fate right so according to jainism man can only attain liberation through himself and so the entire concept of god has been rejected and it is said that the universe was always there no one created it and that uh, an immaterialistic entity like god cannot really create a materialistic entity like the universe and so uh, we can understand that mahavira rejected god now other than god he also rejected rituals and sacrifices at that point of time during the vedic period there were a lot of complex rituals and sacrifices taking place and people were really sick and tired of it more importantly the poor people could not afford 
such rituals and sacrifices so they felt further away from their gods now when jainism came these people were instantly attracted why because the whole concept of such rituals and sacrifices were was simply not present in jainism and according to mahavira rituals were meaningless ceremonies which only benefit the rich because only the rich people could do it right and yajnas and sacrifices are useless why because by conducting such yajnas and sacrifices we are basically hurting other animals and other people right so it involves violence and killings and that is why it was absolutely useless so the concept of equality was also very important in jainism and according to mahavira each and every person could attain moksha irrespective of their function in the society or their jobs right so as we already found out that he had also rejected the caste system in which people were not considered equal whereas when jainism came it instantly attracted people why because everyone was equal in it so according to mahavira everyone was equal irrespective of their color caste or gender right in fact mahavira also promoted women's rights and women's freedom how well he even invited women to join the communities right as we already found out that there were nuns so basically sadhvis and shravikas so women were also allowed in these communities and so basically we can understand how mahavira preached universal brotherhood now we come to another one of important teachings by mahavira this was penance well penance means to discipline ourselves in fact these people were not even allowed to have food or water right so they were supposed to give up all of their possessions in fact they believe in severe starving so even in this day and age people are practicing this tradition right and so it is highly praised when a person practices penance and starves themselves in jainism now do you know that even jains celebrate diwali well they celebrate diwali as the day when mahavira's soul was liberated from the cycle of rebirths and he achieved moksha or nirvana so when he achieved moksha or nirvana the people were already celebrating diwali and it was the dawn of amavasya and so jains also celebrate diwali because it is also of significance to these people so we can see how mahavira has brought a reform and even till this day and age his teachings are very important and valuable and maybe that is why more than 7 million people follow jainism all over the world today don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the delta step app and get easy access to more than 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now